She's on the line to us now from, from Bombela. Uh, Solly, good evening to you. Uh, firstly, have you had a response from the Speaker of the National Assembly, Baleka Mbeta, about your request for this urgent, for Parliament to reconvene? Uh, good evening, Stephen. And yes, we have indeed received a response from the Speaker during the course of the day today, um, in which she declines that request that we have made uh, for Parliament to reconvene. Okay. The problems at Eskom are huge. Everyone knows that. You also want to have a march on Friday about this. Why do you think a march will help the situation at Eskom? What, what do you hope to achieve by doing that march? Look, the essence of the march is to unite all the South Africans who have been affected by load shedding to again highlight to the government the devastating impact that load shedding has had on the country from the small business owners who have had to close operations because they can't afford generators or sufficient fuel to keep their generators running to members of the public on a day-to-day -day basis who, because of the rising cost of electricity, and because of load shedding that some of them, even at public institutions such as hospitals and clinics, are not able to access basic services such as access to medical assistance. The problems at Eskimos are, are huge. I mean, what do you think can be done that isn't already being done? Have you got any solutions that you can bring? Look, absolutely. And uh, historically, we have always been proactive on ESCOM and finding alternative ways of energy to help, one, reduce the ever-increasing pressure on our national grid. One of those proactive measures was our proposal for the introduction of the ISMO bill, which colloquially we refer to it as the cheap electricity bill. But in addition to that was the proposal to allow independent power producers um, into the space so that we can um, use various ways of energy generation that can help reduce uh, these over increasing burden on the national grid but also there is another key component here which is the institutional history of poor governance and leadership instability at ESCOM. That is a separate issue that requires, you know, um, executive intervention. But we have been proactive for as long as load shedding has been a massive problem. And I think it is high time that, you know, our partisanship stays aside and we look at what are the contributions that all South Africans can make to secure the country's energy future. Okay, I mean, when we look at the problems of this, there are two major problems, right? There's the lack of power, in other words, the engineering problem, and then you've got yeah. the financial problem, okay? You talk about the, introducing the ISMO bill. Isn't that pretty much exactly the same as President Cyril Ramaphosa announced in his State of the Nation about the breakup of Eskimo into three parts? I mean, there are huge relationships there, but isn't it roughly the same thing? No, it isn't. The major difference in here is that the difference in here is that we're also proposing for partial privatization of the entity, whereas the ANC, as articulated by the president, wants the state to maintain full um, ownership of the entity. Okay. Um, you, when, when we have this issue, when it comes to paying, when it comes to the financial problems with Eskim, right, there are really only two ways, I think, that... that, that that South Africa can pay for this. One is you can do it through the consumer. In other words, the people who, buy, who use electricity pay more for the electricity you use. The other way is to get the people who pay money to government, I suppose generally speaking through tax, so government money, government would have to contribute more. Do you think the balance at the moment is in the wrong place? Do you think that perhaps it's too much towards the consumer? So the price of electricity is too high. Uh, the Minerals Council tells us it'll cost 90,000 jobs in the next three years. Do you think that actually... It should be more government's problem. The balance should move towards government money paying for the problems at Eskom. Look, you, you diagnose this correctly. I mean, part of the um, frustration to the public here is that, you know, the result of ineptitude and everything else, the burden ultimately is with the consumer. But there are also factors that contribute to this state of affairs that has been allowed by the government to persist. One of those is um, the bad example that government departments and government entities have said through their non-payment of their own electricity bills. All right. So you've been campaigning around the country. You'll be a big part of the Democratic Alliance's campaign. You're in Bombela at the moment. How would you say your campaign is going? 
Look, the momentum has been fantastic. I mean, since the beginning of the year, in the lead up to the manifesto launch, um, we have launched, you know, the um, seven provincial manifestos. Uh, we'll be doing the Northern Cape in the next two weeks. Um, the campaign has gained momentum, and there is now a real sense of unity in the leadership in terms of the purpose, because, you know, this is an important election, and we've got a very compelling offer of building one South Africa for all and the campaign as is now has never been at its peak as it is now and the response has been encouraging. I mean we do internal polling for instance that indicates that through the series of um, ground presence led by Musi Maimani through his Gassi Gassi Tutua or all the political activities that are headlined by the nine provincial, by the nine premier candidates um, result on average in 10 political events um, by the DA throughout the country. So we have increased voter interaction to its maximum. Um, we are having events, yeah. you know, in communities that previously we haven't been able to penetrate at the scale that we are now. All right, Sully, on your version, right, this is what the Democratic Alliance would say. Tell me if I get this wrong. The DA would say, you would say as their spokesperson, that the ANC has huge governance problems, the country faces big problems, and that these problems have happened because the ANC is in power. I mean, that's what he would say, right? You are putting right in my mouth, asking the question. Okay, here's the question. How is it that almost every poll still indicates you would get less than 25%? That surely suggests then that you haven't actually made progress and that as an opposition your party has failed to increase its share of the vote. The real test of those polls will be the result of the election as will be announced on the 9th or the 10th of May. Our own research and polling shows that we are on an upward growth and we remain on track for our three major electoral objectives which have always been to retain the Western Cape, to make sure that we grow to be the majority party in Gauteng and the Northern Cape. And all these polls, we note them, you know, they play an incredible role in measuring both sentiment but compared to what we are seeing based on our own work uh, they couldn't be further from accuracy so you and your version Solly, you put money on it now you're going to win you're going to be the biggest party in Khate we are on track to be the majority party in Khate Solly Malazzi thank you very much indeed for your time the spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance